Handsome Travis sits in the back of the car and stares ruefully at his son. He had to separate from Madison and the others in order to help Chris out of his rebellious period. Chris met three young men along the way. Listening to their stories, he felt like he had found his schoolmates. Then they arrived at a farm in the countryside that was empty but very well equipped. Travis wanted to stay here forever, but Chris wanted to go out and explore the world with his new friends and couldn't stand his subservient father. He enjoyed being recognized by his friends. They were delighted to see the barn was full of hens. It looks like they're going to have a great meal tonight. But outside, Travis notices a few graves under the trees and realizes that the owner is probably still here. So he urges the four young men to stop trespassing on other people's property. They ignored him. He can only control his own son, but the rebellious Chris does not respond to him and continues to do what he wants. Shortly after, a man with a shotgun came into the barn, the owner of the farm, and told them to leave. Travis was there to tell the youngsters to leave, but one of them didn't hesitate to snap the chicken's neck. So the owner shot him in the knee, but no one expected Chris to just shoot the farmer. Now he's enjoying the thrill of revenge. Travis fell to his knees and looked at his strange son, with a sense of remorse and guilt. On the other hand, Victor and Madison came out of the manor and went back to the cruise ship. However, their boat had been taken away, and the robbers had ridden a line on the beach. Afterwards, the four of them passed by a large hotel and stood outside for a long time. They didn't notice anything unusual, so they entered the hotel. Victor rings the bell at the front desk to see if there's any zombies hiding out. Obviously, it's very safe. Just as Alicia and Ophelia are about to go upstairs to search the rooms for supplies, they realize that the sounds of the walking dead are coming from several rooms. Victor and Madison were relaxing on the first floor, drinking wine and sharing their thoughts about the apocalypse. The two of them got more and more involved in the conversation, and before they knew it, they had a lot to drink. Then Victor played the piano with great skill, and Madison went into a frenzy of smashing things. But their noises attracted more zombies outside the hotel, and even the zombies on the upper floors of the hotel were attracted to them. This made Victor sober up a little bit. The zombies are coming at them from all directions breaking down the barriers. Although these zombies are slow moving, it's hard for humans to escape once they are surrounded. Alicia is horrified to see the dead jumping off the balcony one by one. In a hotel surrounded by the walking dead, Madison and Victor's leisurely drinking and piano playing leads to a dangerous situation. The two of them are forced to fight off the attacking zombies. Madison accidentally finds a small warehouse inside the hotel, but his door cannot be opened at all. After defeating a zombie that crawled in, Madison had a plan, she calls Victor in, and now they have to try Nick's way of dealing with the zombies. Miraculously, after they were covered in zombie blood, the zombies stopped freaking out and recognized them as one of them. When they walk out of the hotel and block the door to the lobby, they realize that the car has disappeared. With no time to think, they climb to the second floor of the hotel. Madison is worried about Alicia's safety and is convinced that Alicia won't leave. Victor could only reassure her that maybe Alicia and Ophelia drove off because they had to evacuate. But the truth is Alicia was at the hotel with Ophelia, searching for supplies. When she got out of the shower, she realized Ophelia was gone. And the next thing she knew, she saw a horrible sight. Zombies were falling down the stairs. They were headed for her mother's lobby on the first floor. Ah! Ah! Alicia rushed out of her room to find Ophelia and get down to her mother. What she didn't realize was that the hallways were filled with zombies about to attack her. By nightfall, Alicia was trapped in her room. She marks the number of zombies passing by on the door, then ties her shoes and puts on a high ponytail to go downstairs. I have to say, Alicia does seem like a beautiful, non-stupid teammate for surviving the apocalypse. Alicia arrives in the hallway without alerting the zombies, but she's still calling out for Ophelia, because she doesn't even know that Ophelia has driven off. Seeing that there are zombies on the other side of the hallway, Alicia breaks the elevator door open with her hand. With the zombies coming towards her, she doesn't think twice before jumping towards the elevator rope. Luckily, the zombies' hands aren't long enough to catch her, and they fall into the elevator shaft. But Alicia was losing her strength. Just then, a strange woman pulled her out into the hallway. She frees Alicia, then puts an axe around her neck and asks if she's one of the gang. When she got to her room, Alicia realized her name was Elena. She used to manage the hotel. Elena had keys to every room in the hotel. Turns out there's a down seeing other tenants in the hotel, and one of them kidnapped her nephew to get her key. Alicia says that she and her three companions had just arrived at the hotel, and she's going downstairs to rescue her mom. Elena decides to help her. The next day, the two figured out a way to get away from the zombies. Alicia attracts the zombies in the hallway, and then brings them all into one room. I could tell Alicia wasn't the same girl she'd been. As the zombies enter the room, Alicia quickly closes the glass door, 
Elena closes the door from the hallway. Soon the glass door begins to crack. Luckily, Elena throws her the curtains from next door. Alicia then grabbed the curtain and crawled to the next room. If Alicia knew what Elena had done, Alicia wouldn't have trusted her. There's a wedding going on at the hotel in the middle of a zombie outbreak, but the bride's father died and turned into a zombie. That's when Elena and her nephew didn't hesitate to lock the doors to the venue, locking everyone else inside. On the other side, Alicia and Elena arrive on the first floor, looking at the zombies behind the door. Alicia is convinced that her mother is still in the hall, so she recklessly tries to open the door and look for her. Ignoring Elena's advice, the girl ignores resistance and tries to open the door to the room with the zombies in it to save her mother. But then, a couple of hotel tenants appear behind them. They want Elena's hotel key in exchange for the hostage. Elena had no choice but to give the key to a man in exchange for her nephew. Alicia pulled Elena behind the door. As the door opened, the zombies flooded into the hotel like a tidal wave. They had to retreat. Then Alicia led Elena to an underground passageway that led to the hotel. Of course, the zombies were right behind them. But when they get to the door of the passageway, the door that normally opens won't open. Someone inside must have locked it. Alicia was banging on the door, and Elena and Elena's nephew are fighting off the zombies. The door finally opens as one by one the zombies are coming at them. It turns out Madison had been hiding behind the door. Once everyone was out of the underground passage, Victor blocked the exit with a locker. They take a break and realize that they're running low on supplies. And Oscar, who took the key, had all the hotel supplies? So Madison and Victor decide to talk to Oscar. Madison comes inside and explains why she's here. That we're from the outside, and that the outside world is a much worse place. The only way we can survive is to work together to make this hotel a home, and the first order of business is to rid the hotel of zombies. But this woman says she'll never forgive Elena. In fact, the first person to turn into a zombie was her husband, and her husband beat her daughter, but she blames Elena for that. Madison goes on to say that if we don't stick together, the next group will surely find the hotel, and they'll probably be a bunch of bandits who just looked. Oscar eventually realizes the gravity of the situation. Madison eventually gets the key. They're all willing to follow Madison's lead. The rest of the day is spent going from room to room, killing zombies and burning them. The other survivors in the hotel have also shown up to volunteer for the cleanup program. However, the workload is too much. Half a day has passed and they haven't even finished cleaning up one-tenth of the zombies. It'll be weeks before they're all cleaned up. That's when Alicia finds a better solution. The sign said that the water here is fast moving. They could draw the zombies over the bridge to the beach, then draw them into the ocean and let the water wash them away. Without further ado, Madison takes on the task of attracting the zombies. Madison asked Alicia to take the boat and pick her up at sea because she doesn't trust anyone else. Then Alicia and Elena's nephew start making all kinds of noise to lure the zombies from the first floor to the beach. Victor and Elena open the doors to every room to draw them out. Madison is also attracting zombies in one direction. When all three parties meet at the bridge, the others quickly move to the bridge. Madison is banging on the plate to attract the zombies. Once they're all on the bridge, they close the door. Alicia and the others move downstairs through the side door and then quickly take the boat out to sea to meet Madison. But the waves are so strong, the boat can barely stay afloat. Whether or not they were able to rescue Madison is in the next video.